So I had the opportunity to sit down and have a chat with one of my all-time biggest heroes, Damo Suzuki, legendary artist and singer of the krautrock band Kan. Not only that, but joining us in the conversation are uh, Damo's wife Elki and also Michelle, the filmmaker of the documentary film Energy, the, the, the documentary about Damo Suzuki. It's like this, I've been following Michelle's project since the day he was born and a few months ago I reached out to, to Michelle to see if she wanted to join me in a conversation about the filmmaking process. She was out promoting the, the film and it was screening all, all over the UK and in all this she suggested that we would invite Damu and Elke and needless to say I was pretty pretty thrilled about that. So we hit up a, a, a email conversation deciding on a date and the result is what you are about to, to, uh, to see. It developed to be quite the, the long conversation, but an uh, amazing one, if you ask me. We, we talk not only about the, the movie that Michelle did, uh, Energy, the documentary about Damo Suzuki. Obviously, we also talk about Damo's uh, music and his sort of legacy. But as my these conversations tend to be, we talk about music and life in, in general, so we also hit themes like or like religion, um, symbolisms, and Damo's struggle with his uh, sickness and the recovery of from his from the cancer that he had. So before you start watching, I urge you to go down to the links and watch the trailer so you know what we are talking about. And before or after the conversation, I I I ask everyone to go down to the link. Follow the Vimeo link because you can see the entire film on VOD today. It's just been uh, released in Europe and I think in Japan. It's not been screened in the US, uh, so it's not available in the US uh, today. But Michelle talks a little bit more about that in the conversation. So, Okay, uh, I'm going to start rambling now. Um, please join me in the conversation with Damo, Michelle and Elke. Uh, enjoy. So I'll do some sort of a, I don't I don't want to call it intro because I'm I suck at doing intros, uh, just like this being a show or something like that. But I'll I'll start by by saying like uh, I can start now. Like thank yeah, you so much. For, That's fine. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for for uh, uh, joining me in this conversation. This is a, a dream come true, really. Um, and um, yeah, where to start? Like. I don't know if we should do any sort of um, presentation or something like that. I think that few people watching my channel uh, and uh, find this video online don't know who Damo Suzuki is, but uh, maybe we should go around telling uh, everyone who we are. Is that, yeah. does that sound like a plan? Yeah, sure. I'm Michelle Highway. I'm an independent filmmaker based in West Yorkshire. And I spent five years uh, creating a documentary about Damo Suzuki's uh, life story. Um, it was a beautifully deep, intimate portrait about Damo and Elka and their life together. Um, it's a, kind of a music documentary and a documentary about survival. Um, yeah. And we've just released it in the United Kingdom and screened in nine cinemas. So it's been really wonderful. And I've had the opportunity to see it twice now uh, through your links. It's a fantastic film. I can't wait for my sort of my buddies to to see it out there in the in the in the music world. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So, oh, do you have any plan before we we start or we'll continue? Do you have any plans on on releasing it so everyone can can see it? Yeah, um, I'm still um, submitting to festivals. So I guess because we've we've had festival uh, festival in the UK. I'm going to release it exclusively on Vimeo on demand so people yeah. can stream it and watch it online in the UK and Europe. Um, so I'm planning on releasing that soon. Um, and then hopefully Japan as well. We're just in the middle of sorting out the Japanese subtitles. And yeah, just uh, making slow steps forward so that people can watch it all around the world. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. And and Elke and, and Damo, um, What's your part in this? <laughs> yeah, what's your part in this? You. 
what's what's okay okay <laughs> I, I i'm damo suzuki and uh, uh, behind you is uh, some uh, uh, old my materials and my book is there uh, thank you very much for the decorating so, this yeah, thing obviously. yeah and it's uh, quite good maybe somebody has an interest to buy it but it's another thing so <clears throat> And uh, I've been making music for quite a long time, but uh, it's a different way. So I actually I don't uh, release any kind of uh, albums and records, and so since uh, maybe uh, since two thousand three, mm -hmm. I have a project like now I'm doing. So I'm traveling all over the world. So I performed with this. Uh, project maybe 45 different countries including uh, sweden as well yes. and uh, uh, what i'm doing is so i just don't have any concept before we play and i perform every uh, everyday different uh, sound carriers uh, musicians local musicians mm -hmm. so that means i i don't have any material just we uh, we compose on the spot and yeah. we just presenting this because uh, <clears throat> for me it, for me this is a luxury way to make a music because music is uh, connecting with the time so if this time is really uh, living that means so now i compose it now together with the audience and the musician on the uh, on on the stage then it's really honestly things and uh, it's natural things, and I really uh, like only this sort of music. So it's almost like if you like to eat something and you 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 find that the taste is really good, then another thing is taste is not that good, you know. So yeah. I mean, so these are things that I'm doing, and uh, until now with this uh, uh, project, I made a little bit over one thousand concerts. Oh shit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that's yeah. quite a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite a few, but it could be uh, much more because by the, by accident, so 2014, I get uh, really uh, uh, ill, and so three years almost no concert. But before I did so every year, 80 to 100 concerts, and I flew with airplane maybe 70 times a uh, year, mm -hmm. so average. And uh, yeah, it, it was so uh, since 2003. So before I made a, a, a bit uh, different music. Also, the concept is the same before, <laughs> but uh, I perform together with my friends, musicians. So that's why I know them and we, we have already chemistry. So, you know, it's already not planned, but the planned sort of things because okay. I know them already. But since, since 2003, so I perform with. So uh, only uh, musicians I never saw before. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes no, only 15 minutes before we start, so we meet together and we, we just uh, play. And uh, this is kind of a lottery, you know, but uh, I like this kind of skill. Yeah, I think that, that uh, when uh, I, I listen to your music that you do now, uh, I. I um, I hear sort of a resemblance to the the free improvised jazz that I also listen to. It sort of it uh, feels like you sort of approach music the same way as a jazz musician approaches free improvised music in um, with it in their instruments. Uh, I don't know if I'm right or wrong here, but, but, uh, but yeah, sorry, sorry, but it's uh, so so okay. You say so uh, free free jazz, but uh, free jazz it's always sound like a jazz still. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, my my thing is not sound like anything. So no. because we don't know, uh, I don't know too. And the musicians also don't know what what will, will come. Mm -hmm. And also they have all different uh, experience in the music yeah. for creative things. Some some is from heavy metal, and some is from a country and western or tra traditional music. Yeah, that's true. Uh, even in Sweden, I performed with uh, <laughs> uh, somebody played uh, plant, you know, plant and uh, flowers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, plant make a, a blessing. And she, uh, she, he and uh, so his uh, wife was uh, so collecting this sound from the plant. And uh, we performed together with this plant blessing, for instance. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Or, or in, in a suburb of London place called Crydon, and uh, I perform together with disabled people. Okay. And, yeah, and also sometimes I perform together with string quartet things. And all the times, every time is just uh, different, like uh, every time a different weather and uh, different feeling you have also. It's just uh, for me, it's kind of a luxury. So because I was uh, creating music in a very, very natural, maybe so uh, primitive way, uh, mm -hmm. I made the music and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this that I did it until now. Yes. So that, that is my music is all about. So that's why I cannot tell so anything about the music because if I have now concert and 50 minutes later, I don't know what's going to happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a cool uh, sort of um, uh, approach to, to music. And Elke, you, you have a, a big part of the, the film uh, too. Um, what sort of, can you just <laughs> briefly... Uh, uh, tell us who who you are and your part of the of the film. Yeah, uh, Damo and I we, we know us uh, a long time and we lived um, a long time together when this happened, mm. and um, it was um, from one day to the other. Uh, he was lying in coma and and he was uh, going to die and um, and so I. Um, tried to do everything what I can do that he can survive. I yeah. stayed in the hospital to to watch about him. Yeah. So and um, um yes and um, so we we went together to uh, through this time, you know. So yeah. It was um um at that time I was a teacher and um so I I uh, I get up in the morning very early to 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 make his food because he didn't uh, get the um, food of the hospital and um, mm. because I thought it's not healthy enough. And okay. So and then I went to school and from school I went to the hospital first in Cologne then in Leverkusen mm. and uh, stayed with them. Um, until the evening and then I went back and I made a lot of research because of his um, uh, um, uh, blood what they uh, tested and so on. and then I made a research to ask another day what you know, what ideas I have and so mm. and it was um, yeah it, it, I I, uh, um, I wondered by myself where I have had this power to do that mm -hmm. and I think um, Damo and I we are staying in the Bible and um, I think then there has come a lot of power to help us um, mm -hmm. to go through this time and um, yes uh, it was at first it was to survive and when he survived, it was all this open um, um, well, heist, um, belly, st uh, belly, his open yeah. belly. Yeah. And um, so that finally, after years and um, a lot of surgeries, he, um, he is now fine, not, not really healthy like before. But um, he is independent from all this um, <clears throat> medical stuff. He has to take some um, uh, some medicine against his pain, but um, he doesn't need any um, uh, things he has um, need before, you know. So oh, this oh. all this uh, stuff on the uh, uh, um, belly. Yeah, I understand. I, I actually wrote when I started to to write down my questions. I started to, started right away with with writing like, uh, okay, who is Damo Suzuki, Elke, and Michelle? Well, Damo is the legendary artist and mover of worlds, and Elke and Michelle are two strong women uh, at his side with totally different relations. And to to uh, you, Damo, and and uh, I don't know if if you agree, but I think that doing this, uh, I mean. 
powering through the sickness and uh, keeping the relationship uh, demands a strong relationship and doing a, a film over five years uh, is also uh, not an easy task. So uh, I, I, um, I claim that I, 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 I'm right, that <laughs> you are two strong women at his side. Um, I, uh, Michelle, can, could you uh, just start by uh, telling us how you came in contact with uh, Damo and Elke and when you decided to uh, do the film, that this was a film that should be made? Um, I'd already known of Damo for many years, anyhow, as a music photographer and through a group of friends. Um, and a chain of events occurred. Um, one of Damo's sound carriers passed away, and that was actually my friend. Um, and as soon as I found out that Damo also had cancer, I, I found it quite unbelievable. And I had met Damo a couple of months before at uh, Hebden Bridge. He'd done a, a gig there. I was really inspired by Damo. Um, and I just thought I loved, initially I loved Damo because he's an outsider artist. Mm -hmm. He's like very organic. Um, he's got a unique way of thinking and how he sees the world uh, on a spiritual level and a musical level. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just this, this deep connect that the fact that my friend had also passed away from cancer, it was a way to kind of, I guess a lot of filmmakers do heal it, uh, by creating films or documentaries about something in their life that they connect with. So it was like all these little things that piece together at this moment in time in within the universe at that moment. And um, yeah, so I asked a promoter called Ned from Varsistas um, if he could get us together. And he's very good friends with Damo and Elka and had known them for many years, a lot longer than I'd known them on a personal level so Ned would come and travel with me and help um, me get from A to B and just get to know Damo a lot better and Elka um, and yeah it just really organically grew from there so it was like this beautiful journey. Uh, <clears throat> I'm reading my, my questions here. Um, yes yeah, so, so I mean five five years did you seek distribution at the same time or did you already have distribution uh, at the time so this is totally like like um like Damo I guess we're both very independent this was a self-funded documentary mm -hmm. um I was the cinematographer the editor I had help with Andrew McKee as well um I produced it directed it um so yeah it's something that I've had to do with a really strong vision myself um, promoted it um, myself a lot as well. And with the help of nine PR, mm. we did two crowdfunding campaigns when I needed funds to buy the computer that I'm using right now to chat okay. to you, to mm. enable me to edit the film at home in my own time. Um, I was working quite a few jobs throughout these years as well, which, you know, make something take a little bit longer than it should as well so yeah it was a really organic slow moving journey after the five years i guess to get to this point it took an additional two years okay and the pandemic and, yeah and the pandemic yeah and uh, do you th it feels like it's still a uh, sort of a, a progress because you're screening it now uh through the uk and you are releasing it as a vod uh Mm -hmm. So when do you think that I mean what's the what's the end game I guess you have some some time left before uh, you can just leave it behind you I guess Yeah I guess so um at the moment I'm just really having fun um promoting it getting it out there it's been lovely in, interacting with everybody that's been able to watch the documentary and hear their feedback uh when you make a film you want to, to touch people and their lives and to be able to connect with people and inspire people. And I think that Damo and Elka and how everything went with the documentary really achieved that. So yeah, at the moment, we're gonna try and get it online and also throughout festivals in the U USA next. So mm. uh, yeah, and then finally, I guess it would be like the product DVD and, and Blu-ray, but yeah. at the moment, we we will be releasing very shortly um on Vimeo 
for the UK and Europe, and then hopefully Japan next. Yeah, I'll I'll link in my social medias obviously when it's uh, up there and running. You yeah. you you choose the 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 title energy uh, mm -hmm. and. What what's the story behind the title energy? Because uh, when we have um, uh, had conversations on on email, you also finish all, all of the uh, mm -hmm. emails with energy demo. So is energy something that is important? That's the wrong word. But but what is energy to you? You mean it? No, I or yeah yeah yeah. What is the, okay. yeah. Yeah, and energy is so same, same, same like uh, so I told you before with the uh, kind of the music I'm uh, uh, doing mm -hmm. because it's uh, now, now yeah. it's I energy. Yes, in so doing now. So if mm -hmm. you say I energy, I energy, I energy for twenty times, thirty times, then it's get the sound like energy. Yeah. But because the energy so substance uh, also now you make something that that's why this powerhouse is coming from energies. Energy is not so past things. Things is energy is right now is and right now is the most important thing in your life at the moment you are talking with us. And mm -hmm. so this is the most important because which is living now. So I energy is anything anything is living and giving power to another one, maybe sharing uh, power together. So mm -hmm. this is a kind of cosmos I really like to uh, build up with the music. And if uh, I can do in uh, another uh, field, I would make it this because this is the most the important thing because uh, there, there is many violence and so like this because people don't, uh, people don't uh, communicate. No. So real communication is there and not there and the people is believing so much about the doctor, scientists and so many things. So, but they don't uh, find their own life and own, uh, how it's called, common sense. Mm -hmm. And if if you have as this common sense and this as a um, basis, then you can reach many things because you are honestly to yourself. If you are not honestly to yourself, you cannot reach anything because then everything is lying, you know, believing yeah. lying. So then you cannot reach anything. You can reach things which you are honest and always living or maybe trying to living with the truth then you can re uh, reach real things, organic things, natural things. So you can uh, get all things. So uh, this that's why so it's called the energy. And uh, in Germany, people say uh, energy. So energy, yeah, yeah. energy in Swedish. In Swedish. Yeah, Swedish also, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, th I thought it was a perfect sort of uh, title for the for the. Um, film but because it takes a lot of energy to go through what you have gone through too so it works in sort of different layers i guess yeah. uh, michelle what's what's uh what's your take on on uh, energy or is it just uh, <laughs> the energy coming from uh, damo and elke in this case so initially i guess when you go to watch damo suzuki at a gig you can feel the energy yeah. in the room you can see it like or I mean, it's invisible but you can feel it you, like everybody's like engaged and connecting in that moment in time and I think some people can tap into energy easier than others and give out energy and you know mm -hmm. get all metaphysical like Damo likes to say he's a metaphysical transporter mm -hmm. and uh, I love that concept but the real reason I decided to call it energy subliminally, if you will realize that if you subscribe to Damo anyhow, he always puts energy at the end of his emails. But I wasn't a subscriber when I started making the documentary. I didn't come from that fan base point of view. It was a, a different kind of connect. So that was cool that that was there too. And I, and I became aware of that as I became a subscriber and the more that we um, engage with each other online. Mm. Um, but the first time I visited Damo, he had this wonderful energy doll on his table and that's in the documentary and it says energy on the back. 
and somebody had created this tiny little kind of Russian doll yeah. of Damo with his microphone and it's so adorable and on the back as you can see it says energy and as yeah. soon as I captured that cinematically I was like this is the name of my documentary for sure and yeah thanks Damo that's amazing <laughs> so yeah on so many levels it makes sense to call it energy and it was just wonderful like magic when Damo explains at the end of the documentary about this energy and I'd read about it in the book I am Damo Suzuki that I can see behind you there by Paul Woods which is available on Amazon <laughs> um so yeah it um yeah so it's called energy for yeah. so many reasons yeah um <clears throat> let's see here uh what what's uh what's what, Elka's what... energy was all so so sorry to interrupt yeah, you there yeah. but Elka's energy um was amazing too her Elka's healing energy was just so illuminating and inspiring she was just an amazing partner for Damo and that was really wonderful to capture I was going to ask this later on, but but I'm I'm going to ask it now. Are are you all very spiritual? Because I I, I uh, interpret the music and the the film as very spiritual. Are you um, believers? Uh, I don't know what's the word what what the word is, but are are you spiritual? Being... I'm an incredibly spiritual person. Um on so many different styles of levels. Like I believe in the power of the universe and all kinds of different concepts, but it was really beautiful to be delivered the more biblical concept through Damo and Alka and their faith and the, the encouragement that they were able to have to get through their journey from reading chapters in the Bible, which I've put in there subliminally on the laptop yep. or seeing the book there. Damo talks a little bit about the power of the bible and believing in in god in in a creator that is there to help you if you need to tap into that yeah. and i think that damo taps into that energy and elka quite a lot and i guess that's why he's like a powerful resilient life force um, I think it's important for us to understand that we have this strength and power within us to survive when things get dark, you know, the light can come back. And I wanted to convey that in the documentary. So I'm really glad that you felt that it was a spiritual documentary. Yeah, yeah definitely. And and I I, um, <clears throat> I noticed there's a, uh, a frame or uh, a picture in, in the documentary where uh, you have the Bible and a clock, I think. Um, like mm -hmm. a uh, uh, I don't know what it's called. A clock, yeah. Yeah, little stop. The the little um stopwatch that Damo watch, has. Yeah. One. Yeah. I I studied semiotics at university, and I always found the study of signs and symbols yeah. in in film really interesting. So yeah. as a documentarian, I was able to pick up on the things that that really represent Damo and the power of now and time, you know, this like yeah. limitless thought process that he has. So I, I love to put, just pull that there. And if people want to take it in and soak it up and feel it like you, mm. you did, which is really cool. Yeah. To, to me, it's, it's, it also works in two levels because in one way time is now, but in one, in another way, I feel like time is running running out uh, when you are sure. sick or or uh, uh, when you are getting older. Time is running out, but you have mm -hmm. your faith uh, in. So the, the, it was a, a strong image, uh, in my opinion. So how how uh, uh, how important is um, your faith and God uh, when you create music and and in your relationship also? Yes, sure. So because. Uh... Um, uh, mo most important thing that every every person is uh, uh, protect your house. So your house is your spirit and body. So if you are not able to protect your house, then you cannot get the truth. So, and also this is uh, our mission eventually, so to know the truth in our life, your mm -hmm. life too. So everybody must find find their own truth. So then 
otherwise you can you are walking in the darkness and you cannot see anything you you should get really good eyes from really believing in a god and so you told told before about uh, spirituality but i don't like this word spiritual things okay. because spiritual things is uh, you are uh, getting all kind of religion on and all kind of uh, believeness in a one pot mm. and this is not so because there is all, only one creator of the human being and being under this world exists mm. and this is the truth and this to know then you must research and so now okay now by part of the bible is also standing you must awake so you must awake because so uh, bible is not saying only stories uh, fa fairy tales uh, so parallel so they are writing uh, prophecy so what we are now living in uh, this darkness so you can all find it in the bible if you research it and mm -hmm. that's the meaning of uh, awakeness and uh, this uh, awakeness is uh, important and, uh, through through this you can go your way and you find your uh, your uh, things which that is important which you never saw before but uh, you know, it's like, like a, a puzzle uh, brain. Mm -hmm. You can see a little bit, and now so you study a little bit. So then you can get the whole uh, uh, picture of truth together, getting it together. So maybe one one year before we knew so a little bit about the Bible. Now we know much more because we are awake and we are just interested to research. So because uh, without this you cannot be any kind of so things you can reach so you know i don't i don't know uh, i was in sweden and that time was so before 70s and maybe people is different now it's been all over the world the people is not so much interesting to talk about the uh, bible and god but still so uh, some Many people is now waking up and researching the Bible because it's very important. This. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think that we ha still have a, a pretty strong sort of uh, uh, Christian following here in Sweden, and we uh, cherish the, the the church. And I hope you don't get offended when I say that I'm not a, a, a believer of God or um, uh, religious in any sort, but I've always been fascinated with religion and uh, especially I think a little bit envious of something to believe in because I don't believe in anything bigger than myself so I have nothing to really climb onto when crisis hit, hits if you if you get what I mean um, yeah would you say that you're resilient though still or not would you say you're more resilient than the average person or less resilient for that reason it, it, what's resilient i'm, I'm uh, uh, sorry I'm, it, it's my able to overcome obstacles overcome something like if something very dramatic may be happening would you okay. easily overcome that or no i crawl up yeah. uh, <laughs> in a bundle and scream for help I think <laughs> uh, it's uh, really it's really interesting because I, I could see the power in Damo and Elka and mm -hmm. Damo only had 10 percent chance to survive mm -hmm. and I think because of the faith he was able to survive for that reason and Elka of course such a powerful yeah. helpful partner but I could see that Elka and I kept it in the documentary that she was like at some point she was thinking where is your God um and I tried to convey that God is everywhere God is in the moment like when Damo was on stage it's like when everybody's connecting like universally that is godlike where all these tiny little cells connecting and this this forceful this energy I just love the power of of um, that thought process through Damo and Elka. Yeah. But yeah, I I find it interesting from an atheist point of view because I'm not an atheist, but um, I have to believe there's something else, or it's just so there's nothing to be hopeful about. 
no, no I, I, as I said, I'm, I'm envious of people believing that there is, because I don't, but maybe that's also um, uh, part of waking up and, and uh, as you say, Damo, researching and uh, getting a little bit better understanding maybe of, of uh, the different faiths and in this case, mm -hmm. the, the Bible. Do you um, observe things in life that could make you think, oh, this is a sign that, so for example, I like okay. observe like rainbows or I might come across a white feather or I might look at the clock and it's 11, 11, or like, yeah. which is an angel number. Like I'm a little bit diverse and a bit more extras than Damo and Elka because they're more just the Bible. But I kind of like yeah. take notice of all kinds of things. Like if somebody like, my grandfather passed away I'd get like white feathers nearly every day when I went for a walk and it's like that's not just a coincidence so things like that to me do do you not ever have anything unusual that might happen to you that might change your mind definitely uh definitely and and I think that it's just like you say the coincidences sometimes feels too good to just be a coincidence but and maybe I could call that like being touched by something mm -hmm. bigger, something like God uh, and God-like. But I think that that's more me putting a label on the experience uh, rather than uh, sort of a strong faith, if you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, I'll 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 go to the next uh, question. Were there any any point during the filming where you Elke and Damo felt like uh, Michelle was getting a crow? A, a crow just hit my window. Sorry, that really freaked me out. No, <laughs> a crow. Did you just hear him? It was like a yeah. big stone. Shit. That was a sign. No, it wasn't really, but no. it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, Sorry, what was I my cat. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah, but were, were there any time in during the filming where uh, you felt like it got a little uh, too personal? Did you, did you feel like um, it got yeah too personal, too much into uh, sort of into the, the 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 safety of your home, if you know what I mean. I guess that's the question for yeah for Damo yeah, for or Elka. Damo and Elke, yeah. yeah. Um, Damo. I I no, did you I, feel I, like? I, so I I think it's it's not. Uh, so I didn't care about anything. You can ask uh, Michelle as well because mm -hmm. it's a hard project. She can find something so out of me and uh, so it's. Uh, you know, I mean, so creativity is like a universe. So mm -hmm. she could make anything out of me because so for uh, my uh, message was so there is many people having so heavy sickness and so pro from this uh, documentation, if uh, so, so, uh, we can help some people for, from weakness and get the strength then I think it's okay. So, and uh, I think this is a message of the whole film. It's not kind of a music film that people maybe wish to see a uh, music film, but it's, uh, as, as you know, uh, I told you, so my music is a different field and so only life and so. And this is the uh, fact that I was so really six and uh, and I operated 40 times in this uh, three years. And even during this, so between the uh, surgery and the surgery, uh, I made a concert as well with, mm. uh, with many handicaps. And uh, this is a whole uh, thing that I, I can remember all of, of my life. And uh, this is a ha hard point but still I, I could have hope. And so it's almost like, I, I don't know if you have interest to uh, maybe read uh, one part of the Old Testament job, job stories. Mm -hmm. 
and this is the things which really is uh, uh, inspiring and I was living uh, like that way and uh, it helps me a lot and in the uh, in the future as well so I'm 70, 72 years old I mean not looks like so but 27 is no more but uh, I don't feel like 72 years old mm -hmm. no because I cannot see myself all the time. If I I see I see myself, I was, oh, so something is wrong, or, you know. Right. But if if you cannot see yourself, so you feel like so so let's say so same age like you, you know. So uh, I don't mind, and I don't think that it will be kind of uh, final final is coming or or like this because I'm uh, I'm living in a, with ing mm -hmm. so uh, that's uh, that is always extension and uh, uh, never never gi giving up for any kind not only sickness mm -hmm every kind of things. So I think living in the power of now for Damo has also kept him very young and yeah. also engaging with younger people, you also say, but I think the fact that you've always continued to do the things that you're truly passionate about, which is something which is hard to attain. A lot of people go through life and they barely do what they really love. And before they know it, time has left us. And I think that and Damo, you do look young, and so does Elka, because you've done that, you know, you've you've kept up this high energy force because you you live what you love as much as possible. Yeah. And I think that's really inspiring because it's really important to do what what makes your heart smile, you know. I, I remember when I sat down and, and started to watch the, the film, I didn't know really what to expect because I just got the book a few days ago. It took months to get here to Sweden. Uh, so I haven't read the, the book or had sort of, I mean, my my connection with you, Damo, was through the music. So when the film sort of started with you in your home with like uh, nurses uh, and I don't know what it's called, like things going into your arm. And, and it, it was so strong to start the, the, the film with that. So I almost sat there with tears in my eyes because I was um, sort of expecting the film to, 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 to start with sort of the, the, the rock star, Damo Suzuki. But what we got was the human being, Damo Suzuki. And that's the most important thing. Uh, I thought that was uh, beautiful. And and I mean, the film is mostly about that, I guess, uh, the human, uh, Damo Suzuki. Were there any sort of, I don't know where, I don't know if this was a question <laughs> or just a, a statement from my side, but were there any sort of, um, uh, did you think anything of it when you started the movie like that uh, with one of those scenes? Um, initially, actually, when I was putting the structure together, the first ever thing you would have seen would have been the the Hickman catheter and the nurses around. Mm -hmm. And after a while and a little bit of feedback from other people, they thought that that would be too much and, and make people kind of either afraid or um, I don't know. So I decided initially it does start with, you know, who Damo is, mm -hmm. what he's done, how many years he's been performing. And then you see little clips of him in the past. And then it does go to that because that is what was happening. And that is the story we wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. We wanted to inspire people and it, we want, I wanted it to be as real as possible. And I felt extremely privileged that I was able to um, capture those personal moments and Damo and Elka trusted me to be there. And I didn't get too intimate, you know, only, I felt I had to be really respectful and careful of what was and was not available to see. And I think that it's just been done really carefully by myself. And um, and I think that I know that Damo and Elka are happy with that. I did show them throughout 
the narrative structure, lots of different rough cuts. And uh, yeah, I'd never do anything that would, you know, upset them or anybody that I work with. I'm so respectful. It's just a huge privilege as a filmmaker to be able to capture and connect people with people on that level and mirror people and, and moments and situations universally that can connect with other people and they can tap into so it was just great to plug into into their world and create this this documentary yeah i can add that um we trust uh, michelle and um it was um like yeah i think we we have got uh friends in this uh um in this time and this it was um also a lot of humor. We laughed a lot <laughs> together, and um, and um, yes, it was um, like um, yeah, no, a friend mm -hmm. is at home, and um, so it was. Um, so it, this um, for me, I'm not used uh, to be on camera like Damo. For he, for him, is um, more natural, no. Mm -hmm. Oder? Yeah, natural, like so. Big brother is watching at me. Yeah. Like... <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, but that's true. I mean, you're. I mean, a... I mean, Nisha is not a big brother. Nisha, small, small <laughs> cat. You know? No, no, small cat. Small cat at, at home is watching at me almost like this. So that's why I I didn't care about who is there, you know. So because it's it's not natural. So if I too much taking care, you know. So, yeah. so, mm -hmm. so our, our cat was so really so lovely and <laughs> <laughs> stay cool. So that's why we we did it like this way, you know. So and to trust the, the cat, no? Yeah, be, because before I I gave I gave her so really good food. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They were so kind to me, and they made very good food. But yeah, I guess my uh, as a filmmaker, it's important to have a good relationship and with people that you're working with. And we were just so organic and just capturing the moment in time. Almost I tried to make the camera invisible and just try to um, just have the camera there and then just work around what's happening in that moment in time. Um, a lot of a lot of those moments were like that. And then later on, like I get a chance to look at all the all the objects in the home and things like that. Um, so yeah, it was it was really lovely. We were all really great friends, and we still are now. So yeah, and I think you can feel that in the documentary as well. Mm -hmm. This genuine connect, which is different from, you know, so, sometimes when you know, I think it's nice that it's so independent, and we didn't have a crew there with lots of different cameras, and it's just me and my camera, yeah. like a yeah. <laughs> like I love a how you frame also. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny when Damo said, like, a small kitchen. Um, there was a scene in the documentary that we actually deleted where we talked about Damo's name and how it's pronounced. And the fact that Damo changed his name was quite interesting. Um, and he did describe how um, you're born and given a name like a small kitten. It reminded me of that phrase. And it was important for you to change your name, Damo. Um which wasn't in the final cut, but you could uh, explain to us why you changed your name if you wanted to, Damo. <laughs> no, no, it's not necessary. So because I have now now another name. <laughs> another name. Yes. So I have so much names, so, so that, that I cannot remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. You'll have to reveal the new name now. Yeah. And... So my name is Jonas. <laughs> oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm honored. I to, to recommend you um, uh, the, the book Job, uh, Damo uh, uh, said to you, yeah. because when he was so ill, when he was going to die, uh, I uh, always read this book, Job. Yeah. You know? And okay. this was really uh, inspiring because um, this man also went through terrible things. He was very rich and very wealthy, and then came illness, and he go down, and and um, and um, there is a part that uh, Satan uh, told God, ah, he is only uh, uh, um, 
um, very believing in you because he has everything, he is wealthy, he, is, uh, he has nice children and so on. <laughs> and he said when he will lose everything, he will lose also the belief in you. And okay. God said, please try it, but you, you don't have the right to kill him. And so he didn't give up his believing, even he was so suffering. Hmm. And at the end, God gave him everything back. Yeah. And so I was uh, believing that um, that we go to through this state of Hiob hmm. and at the end he will uh, get everything back and also uh, every doctor said um he never will can uh, he never can sing again because of his um, um belly and the yeah. the many surgeries but god gave him back yeah he he can sing uh, even it's impossible <laughs> yeah. yeah so and um i yeah, think this this might be a good book for you because there is the Old Testament is uh, 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 often about the uh, uh, um, Noah and Moses yeah. and, and, and the history. Mm -hmm. But this book is totally different. Yeah, totally different. So it's uh, it's not talking about uh, Judah and so it's a different place. But but now I can remember. So your name is Jonas. So yeah. if we if we, you you have a little bit of interest in the Old Testament the Bible, you must uh, read the book of Jonas. Yeah, yeah. maybe you read, read it or already. Yeah. No, uh, we have like my my uh, my wife. Uh, she comes from a. Uh, um, church family her mom has worked in in church for 50 years i think as a she, she's p piano i don't know the english word for it um so they're part of the the family is extremely uh, uh faithful is that the word for it uh, yeah. so but i'll definitely uh, check out uh, the book of job um uh, i'll promise i promise I'll, I'll do that um that would be uh yeah, now after talking, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to read that part of, of the Bible. Yeah, 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 that's really inspiring as well, because you feel like, you know, your faith in God and um, the fact that you were able to, you know, survive 10 percent and you were able to sing again. And yeah. I think that also Elka was kind of trying to say as well Um sometimes people that may not have a belief in God, if something happens like that, they seem to turn to God and like... Mm have more of a faith and sometimes maybe that might happen for that reason to bring you closer to yourself on a spiritual level on a healing journey and yeah it's quite interesting yeah i love uh, uh i love how you framed also when when sitting talking in your uh in when damo is talking in the home and elke you frame it so there's always a lot of books around them i don't know if that was intentional but I feel like they are surrounded by knowledge uh, all the time. Yeah. Do you have any sort of thought or is it just like me? Because I have stuff everywhere in my house. <laughs> so. Well, Damo's home was really perfect to be yeah, able to see. We have, we're, sorry, we have many books. Yeah, me too. Like yeah. I'm framing this now uh, like this, but yeah. you should see the rest of the yeah, sort of so house. So it's, we, it's, I have we, books everywhere. I, I think so. We have a, a dining room, so alone is maybe near to two thousand books. Yeah, oh, that's also, amazing. Also, also in the cellar is maybe two or three times more books. Yeah. So we are so yeah. we are living in a, a so small apartment. So that means so we are always sandwiched from the yeah. books, <laughs> and we are sleeping sleeping between the books. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> so that's 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 why getting always warm, you know, because paper is getting warm, so yeah. we don't we don't need any kind of blanket. Perfect. Outside it's three degrees, my minus three degrees, but we can do with really com comfort and especially so our head is getting richer and richer and richer, you know. So we, we, because I I have many interests and I'm curious to everything. So so recently. So I started started to paint again. So okay, I stopped yeah. painting for almost a half uh, half a century. I didn't paint anything, but I started to to paint because at the moment I don't like to make any performance anywhere because I really don't like to traveling at the moment. Mm -hmm. The reason is so that uh, I should go to eat in a restaurant and so you know so. <laughs> No, that, that I'm not saying that I don't like to pay any money or something like this, but it's not a healthy thing everywhere. Yeah. So uh, instead that, so I I'm cooking by by myself. I'm quite good uh, person person to cooking so many different kinds. I do Japanese on and Italian Spanish and all kinds of things. So I make it with myself, like mm. I make music or like I paint uh, paints because mm. every kind of things, creative things, are actually the same. Is because if you have your own message to do something, then you can make the really good thing. So if you have a philosophy of yourself to cooking, so I don't, we don't use, use but so, uh, but things we hate to go to fast food. Instead we, so I spend so two, three hours a day for cooking dinner mm. and things like that. And mainly, so we made so three or four uh, courses menu but at the moment, not because we are getting old and uh, <laughs> stomach is also getting, uh, you know, so I'm getting also also so smaller, <laughs> very compact. So really like uh, all the Japanese Tonandis uh, lady, you know, so, and, uh, but I, I like to make many things with myself and yeah. I, put my time for it, maybe for the other people to say, it, ah, it's quite boring, but, but why, because why he don't go to eat anywhere and it's much more easy. But the easy thing is always, or easy thing, or without paying anything is mainly very, very expensive. Yeah. So if you get the sickness from the bad food, it's after you, you must pay so much money. Yeah. But if you eat all the time and continue good things, then you are staying in your health. Mm. And that means, so everything you get from your mouth is also substance in your uh, body and mm. going to bring to. And also if you eat so creative things, then you are getting a creative person too. But mm. if you take a fast food, you don't uh, think so so much thing, and uh, you get the damages, and uh, you know, so you are getting like a zombie. So, so <laughs> you, you you cannot do anything. But if you do anything creative thing with yourself, so okay, I cannot uh, make uh, knit, knitting prova or something like this you know, with a nice uh, Scandinavian Scandinavian <laughs> style. So you know, but. Uh, uh, in a positive uh, field that uh, I'm interested, I can get into it, like a cooking, painting, mm -hmm. also yeah. I don't know, music. Maybe I I have something else too. Then I like to make it by myself because it's really fun. Mm -hmm. Because every everybody is unique. Actually, yeah. everybody is unique. But majority of the people don't try anything to create them themselves. On to, to find a new field which he, he can do or he can he, he have many interests and uh, development interests and so things and they don't do but actually everybody can make so uh, many things be, because we have 48 million uh, billion brain cell mm. so we can everybody can make something. Mm something creative and creative things is good because you are personal things instead of buying so already things and so you know yeah, yeah. Can you sign? yeah on a creative level yeah i'm oh yeah let's have a look at damo's new art piece this that's great 
Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it's so one. beautiful. Yeah. And this one. Can you see that? Yeah, I took the photograph and uh, the photographs and then Damo's painted it. That's awesome. That's cool. How long did that take, Damo? Just one big one. Yeah. Okay, okay. so every day I work maybe two and a half a day, yeah, hours. So that means so six, six, seven hours altogether. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's healing as well. Any art's e healing, isn't it? So painting is really therapeutic for the mind. Yeah, this body one and soul. Is from a photograph of uh, Michelle. Yeah. She's made in London. But, and she is a real good photographer from the moment, you know. So I didn't know that she <laughs> did. Yeah, I took a lovely photograph. Uh, Elka bought some really unusual goggles and the hat. It was really cool. It was a fun day. Yeah. It looks awesome. It's like um, steampunk almost. Yes. Yeah. But yes, uh, your question about the, uh, there's so many books, etc. in yeah. Gamo's house. I wanted as a filmmaker to be able to soak up the entire essence of Damo mm. Suzuki as much as possible. Yeah. So to be able to get all the different, like there's lots of different images of all the different styles of books he reads so that yeah. if people want to engage more and learn more about, you know, the mind of Damo Suzuki, they can buy yeah. that book. Yeah. <laughs> So I, yeah, I, I, I like the image because it re reflects on you guys being uh, through the through the, uh, the 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 film. You seem like highly intelligent people surrounding yourself with um, the voices of other highly uh, intelligent people. But in another way, you talk in the um, in the movie about or film about um, being unique and uh, creating. A unique artistry or music um how does that sort of work together with um all this input from other do you take input from other when you create your art or uh, do you try to make it as just a, a, a clear sheet yeah mainly i don't make any kind of plan so so i because so i plan then, then forced forced to have any kind of uh, destination. Mm -hmm. So I really don't like to have any kind of a destination. So if we tra I travel all through Sweden, so mm -hmm. then let's go to so this place and this place and but but if I like to stay, then I stay so long. Yeah. So you know because uh, anything is coming that you cannot see in the future what's going to happen. So with the painting also, anything is happening. But if you are planned, then you have a uh, certain kind of uh, uh, goal. Yeah. And this goal, I, I'm not so much interested in. Most important uh, for me is interesting, interesting uh, uh, thing is uh, during the making of music, Together with another people I never met before, and 15 minutes before we can came together, and together we are making uh, not on not words, but we are taking a conversation on, and to understand each other, and getting together one form of the music, and this to share to the uh, audience, and this is one side. And the painting and the cooking is all also you have some some kind of maybe for cooking you have an apple and something like this and before so first I think with this I make so kind of uh, direction mm -hmm. but suddenly I got the idea mm, if I mix with this one and then taste is good then, then I make it so so I don't like to so have any kind of uh, Mm, no, uh, and, and, and the product because mm. cooking also painting also during this moment you are doing is really really interesting than uh, product itself yeah. so you are so free with this moment and you can go anywhere you you can go with a paper and something like, like something another so things so getting together and so and it's 
many, many different ways you can meet, and then, okay, I take this, and then the next step, then I can take this. And you, you can go to many, many different, maybe, so uh, it's not a test like uh, which you uh, thought, like a uh, beginning, but this moment I'm doing is, uh, for me, is important than itself, but mm, maybe yeah. it's getting better. It is really getting better. So, because you are spending your worthy time for this thing, creative things, it doesn't matter any any kind of creativity. But if you have own philosophy and own ideas, then then you can you can go anywhere, and it's uh, limit uh, unlimited. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, you know. Creative. Yeah, I think we've all got we're all made of energy, and we've all got chakras, and we either have blockages or we're unblocked and I think either way you attract people that you need in your life and I think on an organic level working with Damo and Elka I um, was able to connect with them and gain an understanding of mm -hmm. how to like utilize my energy and the and the power of now the power of creativity and the power of just being really organic mm -hmm. um so yeah, on a creative level, your question was about who are you inspired by. I guess I've got similar similar thoughts to Damo on how to create, start from zero and just see what happens and don't yeah. really worry about it. It just works organically in the way on your own personal spiritual journey as a as a whatever anybody does like as a filmmaker. Um yeah, it was I really feel that the, it journey. feels uh, to me, I, I I have to plan ahead. I have to have a schedule or something like that because otherwise I go crazy. Uh, uh -huh. So to me, it's a terrifying thought that I, uh, that I I don't plan ahead or I don't have any sort of goal. Uh, but uh, I can see that it's also uh, liberating to not have a path uh, mm -hmm. ahead of you that you have to go down to. Yeah, I guess it was like I connected on the level that it was a never-ending journey. But as a filmmaker, mm. you have to have an end. Yeah, path obviously. Say, okay, this is closure. And there were times when I had to really be mindful and not let myself become overwhelmed by the amount of time it was mm. taking. Mm. Um, it, it was important for me to create a Facebook page and an awareness for people that know of Demo that the film was in progress. So mm. that holds me accountable, which could give people anxiety, but you've just got to be really mindful about it and stay calm and just do what you need to do in that moment because that's right for you, because that's your path, that's your journey. And it wasn't until kind of around 2019 where things started to really work out very well for the film. Damo had released his book. Mm -hmm. I'd helped Paul get images for the book. He also helped me get um, images um, as well for the film. And just things just happened really organically, like by magic, Damo would say, could you help me find the person that drew this? And then I'd find Juan Barabani in Buenos Aires, who then did our animation, yeah, which was not done animation. until I had the seed of the idea four years before. Mm -hmm. So it took four years to visualize that and for it to come into fruition. Mm -hmm. I just love that, you know, the fact that if people rush things and think oh I want to make this in 12 months time and then it's done I think with a documentary time is so important to to give you this beautiful journey it's more rich yeah yeah have you always been like this uh, Damo uh, this, uh, sort of uh, in arts not planning ahead in the, when you did these uh, recorded these records did you have the same sort of philosophy about arts and life as you do today yeah if i say so maybe it's not truth but uh, anyway so um one thing is so sure that i'm quite a lazy person yes okay. so that's that's why i i didn't like to repeat anything so I study, so, so mainly band is so going to studio and maybe before compose and playing this one and so many times, then they recorded it and then go to uh, tour. Mm -hmm. And this kind of so, 
uh, circles. It's not my my things. So oh. you know. So uh, when I did this with Ken, also we had uh, that luxury. We had own studio. So oh, okay. yeah, that, that's why so we can record it twenty four hours a day. So yeah. you know. So but many reasons. So many because we got money and we investigated only for studio to create things, but many bands had money and they bought a good car or bought a house or something like this. But mm -hmm. we so invested for future creative creativity much more to find maybe secret of the music or something like this. So, so that by that time too, that we didn't have any special components Oh, I did this one. I did this one. It's there was not all the people who came together and they uh, took their part of it. And uh, so how it's uh, this uh, album is done is like like this way. So before too, also when I was uh, making uh, uh, music on the street before can. So mm -hmm. I was I was a street musician. So yeah. busking around. So many countries in uh, Fran uh, so uh, Europe, mm -hmm. and this time also I didn't have any pieces because I couldn't have oh, any. Yes. And uh, yeah, at this time, <laughs> <laughs> this time it's in the Copenhagen in nineteen. Uh, 1969 or something. Ah, cool. <laughs> and the, that time also, so I didn't make uh, any, anything because uh, I I had uh, uh, not uh, all six strings on the guitar. No, so I, I was so poor that I cannot buy so <laughs> uh, strings. <laughs> yeah, new new string. So I performed together with only three spring, uh, strings or one string sometimes. You know, and, uh, and uh, I I should do anything which I have as an opportunity to create something. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if I got many or if I have a small bit of things. For any kind of a situation, I have to survive. So yeah. I was I was trained trained this one as a uh, street, street musician and so and this is quite always like this. I don't uh, have so much ambition to do anything, but if some somebody comes with a, a story or something, then if it's uh, so fitting together with me, like uh, Michelle did, and uh, then powers. yeah, and. Uh, and then, then I do, you know. So I don't have any kind of, uh, so complete. Uh, so maybe I cannot build a good house, you know. <laughs> if I build the house, so did it's so horrible. So you know, so it's I like to get this day this and next day this, next day this. But with the music, you can make painting. You can make because you don't have to take any kind of responsibility. So mm -hmm. you. Yeah, you, you can do anything that you like. So that's why music and the painting and the, so filmmaking is a little bit different because it's kind of only process you cannot do is because people must see product. So totally different, no? But yeah. the painting and the music or cooking, so. Yeah, it's not life shattering if it doesn't work out <laughs> or. Uh... But um, but in in the film you you say that you uh, don't feel like a part of the uh, crowd rock movement. Uh, has that changed over the time you were filming, or are you still? Uh, is that sort of still your uh, opinion that you don't you aren't you weren't part or aren't part of the crowd rock? Sort of that is maybe from the very beginning. It's like this because I don't like to. Uh, get in a uh, categorizing so oh. yeah. yeah because music is an uh, only universe and for me it's, it doesn't matter if it's free jazz or so, you know heavy metal or any any kind of thing it's the idea of the uh, recording companies mm -hmm. or recording shops because they can uh, they can sort out so this, this yeah this, you know? I, I i agree with you i totally agree with you i, I talked with a, a progressive uh, artist a progressive music artist uh, just 
two weeks ago, something like that. I did a um, interview with him. Uh, it's, he's called uh, Peter Brynjelsson. He plays with a Swedish band called Ragnarök uh, on the Silence label. Um, anyway, he uh, is of another opinion. His opinion is that you have to have uh, labels on music because without labels on music, you don't have a map. Like uh, the listener needs a GPS to navigate through the music landscape. And I don't agree with him, but I think it's a, a interesting sort of theory uh, in a way that you have to hand the listener a map, uh, a guide. Um, I don't know, do you have any sort of thoughts of, about that? No, so I, I think it's almost like a communicating with the people. So if you meet somebody who uh, you never saw before, then you don't know actually anything. But we we are talking about then you uh, slowly so understanding personality and when this person is friendly or something like that. And uh, choosing music is also a thing. So so whole universe music is not the kind of the place. So and if we uh, he, this person has an interest in one part of the music, it's his, his things because his choices. Mm. But there is many things is happening in the whole music world as well. And I don't like to put it everything so together, but uh, I like to get out from uh, things so together to out and the people uh, uh, listen to the music or movies or it's not much any kind of creativity. So that uh, to find themselves not so uh, approachment from a recording a company, this is a trend, this is a so and so music, and that's why you should hear it because already uh, listening to listening into the music, he has already answer, which is uh, belongs to this category and so on. Mm -hmm. And this kind of thing is not the important. So if you go to buying something in a organic shop or something like this, and you didn't see it before, but it's a quite interesting package or anything so which uh, ma makes you interest, then you mm -hmm. don't know it, but you buy it because then you can you can open your universe a little bit so bigger. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is like this. I don't know. Uh, like uh, before we talked about the Bible. So Bible, uh, we don't know the Bible. So that's why, so take it like this. But if you have interest, then you can open and you can awake for any kind of things because it's it's, it's not only religion's book, book and it's history and everything human being and this society happens it's all inclusive so from this you can choose this so like music is also for me is it's just for me the universe mm -hmm. i don't like to take it this category this category guitarist play always like this heavy metal guitarist so is a, um, um, even moving on the stage actually quite the same person is like this it's like a robot you know so so I'm not so much in interest. And so I I hope you know, many people wake up for own taste and own uh, unique personality. From this, they can find it music, but mm -hmm. not the music is coming to you and this and this too much information because many information is killing your life. Mm -hmm. So information is the most dangerous uh, weapon in a human society. Mm. How much of the lies in the history we we are believing still and so things like this. Yeah. So there is many things. That's why music is special. Painting is also special. Don't trust in a music reporter or a criti critic mm. or something like this. Just find yourself. Yeah. It's the easiest way and yeah. it's best to you. I'll ask the same question to to Michelle uh, about the film. It's a documentary film, but we talked a little bit about uh, the the sort of the the label on the film. Do you do you believe that this is a music film? Do you believe that it's a kraut rock documentary, or how do you sort of approach 
the I probably film. have two polar opposite answers for that. Like mm -hmm. sometimes if people are lost, it's important to give them a label so they can connect or if they need a label to learn more about their self, if they're similar to other beings that might be given a label professionally or on various levels, musically or psychological levels, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's helpful to have a label. Uh, with the documentary, I haven't really thought about, I'd say that it was, a, it's it's the human genre, it's a human documentary, it's a deep, intimate portrait. Yeah. It's just screened in nine cinemas as part of the Dock and Roll Music Festival, but mm -hmm. technically it's not a, as you would call it in the mainstream world, a music documentary, which are generally a lot of talking heads and a lot of music. Yeah. Uh, this is a documentary, I guess, about healing. Um, mm -hmm. It's universally about all kinds of things, so you can't really label it. I just call it a human documentary, mm -hmm. healing documentary, but it, you know, it's about Damo Suzuki and he's a musician it does yeah. feature lots of music it's part like road trip as well after the healing process so yeah I don't know people can call it whatever they like you know like it's it's up to them everyone's different they've all got their own ideas so they can put their own label on it if they need to yeah, yeah. that's why I told you I have many different names yeah. I yeah. get this now, Damo. I get this now. <laughs> also, Damo, the photograph that Elka just showed us, I've I've seen that a lot online and I always wondered who took that photograph? Can you remember having the photograph taken? Was it your own camera and you asked somebody to take a photo? No, it was a professional uh, Japanese painter. Uh, so photograph. Oh, um, was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he was uh, used to live in uh, Copenhagen that time. So. So he, right. he, uh, interesting yeah i don't know he must be if he still lives i have no con contact when he still lives then he, he's more than 80 years old so. yeah it's a wonderful photograph i've seen it yeah. shared online many times mm. uh, talking um, about beautiful photographs the the sort of the poster for the the film with the the blue spotlight on on Damo's uh, face is fantastic. It's like it's it's a piece of art, really. Uh, I, I feel like it's connecting both with the psychedelic world and sort of the documentary world. So, uh, yeah, good choice. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for that. I took that photograph whilst I was trying to also capture the moment with moving image. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of my favorite concerts that Damo did in okay. Brighton at the Hope and Ruin. And he had been in hospital for 12 weeks. He should have only been there for two weeks. Mm. We were all very worried. And for me, it was like his comeback show. And um, the music at that venue and the collection of artists. It was really beautiful and poignant. You can hear the strings and something about strings that just kind of breaks your heart or evokes so much. And then the blue lighting, which is kind of unusual, but it gives this, like you said, this immense energy. It's quite an unusual color, um, a hard color to work with, but it feels nice. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think it's a, a perfect perfect photo or a perfect poster or cover or whatever you want to, to call it. Um, just I'll, I'll let you go soon. I'm so grateful for having this time uh, and, and uh, th this conversation with you. But uh, one thing that I took with me when the film was uh, was over was that I had this sort of thought in my head like that... Uh, life or being alive living that it has a value uh in some ways I, th I, th I thought it was very sort of hopeful in one way uh at the end of the movie when you you have your speech at the press conference uh sort of like uh, life have value don't take it for granted mm -hmm. is this one of the things that you wanted to communicate michelle or um Absolutely, yeah. Time, the power of now as well is so important. Time moves so fast and, you know, we're, we're uh, 
changing all the time and evolving and yeah just to take a step back and just really think about you what what you really want to achieve in life what what you want from this journey and who's important to you and how do you want to grow what what answers do you require that are unanswered mm -hmm. as a documentarian um, it's really beautiful to be able to connect and take myself out of my comfort zone and meet people that I'd never usually meet. I think when you find a passion, something um, in you grows and you become brighter, like the light turns on and it takes you to places and paths that you would never go upon if you didn't have if you weren't brave enough to take that choice to be like, this is my passion. This is what I love and to and to stay with that. And um, I think you can see that connect with Damo. He, you know, continuously went on this never ending tour and he's had such a wonderful life experience. And I guess it's just to say, you know, to to kind of wake people up if they need to be uh, that that message, I guess, um, if they want to be more adventurous but I guess it's really more of a documentary that's about resilience and about courage and about being brave and the power of now and the power of positive thought and yes. if something you know happens that we can't necessarily be seen to be able to control we actually can control a lot with the way that we behave internally and how we internalize things on a psychological level mm -hmm. I think that if we have a lot of stress in our minds it can cause further stress within our whole entire body which I guess is scientifically proven but it was just really amazing to be able to convey that through Damo and his journey the fact that he only had 10% mm -hmm. chance to survive and just, yeah, lots of universal things like the music as well and love as well. I, I had like, um, you talked about the fact that I had lots of images of things around the house and there was that little poster, like, what are you looking for? And then I and then I cut to Damo and Elka looking at each other. We're all like looking for our other half, you know, to like yeah. connect this with somebody, you know, our soul our soulmates. It was like, I wanted to put as much energy and, and as much human concepts in there as possible that we could all connect to on different levels no matter who we are or what kind of life experience we've had there's something in there hopefully for everybody yeah yeah great words thank you <laughs> uh, thank you so, much. so, thank was, you so much for watching the film so with such detail as well man I've, I've been following the project since you uh sort of announced it on Facebook or uh, Instagram. I don't know which of the channels that I went for first. And and uh, and I, I remember the Kickstarter campaign also somewhere. I, I got in touch with that, uh, that it was coming. So, I mean, I've been I've been really anxious of seeing the result and I was super pleased. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better sort of film about Damo Suzuki. Uh, as I said before, I, I think that if one thing you really get the humanity of the artist in this case, and that is so much more important uh, than uh, anything else, in my opinion. Fantastic so documentary. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate what? that. And it's quite interesting you mentioned about the crowdfunding campaign as an independent filmmaker to be aware for other independent filmmakers. Mm. Uh, if you do really well and you do promote that campaign, it's not just helping you gain the funds to create the documentary. It's also spreading the world that the, word yes. that the documentary exists. So that was really powerful in itself that helped me, you know, be able to reach more people that love Damo. I we could have a, a, a we should maybe we could or should have a discussion just on filmmaking because I love it. I'm, I have a, a small background on filmmaking also, but uh, you are right. It uh, like a marketing tool. It's it's uh, a no brainer to do one uh, like a, cr a crowdfunding uh, project. I think that the Sapa movie uh, that they made also started uh, out as a sort of crowdfunding and uh, uh, a documentary on free jazz, for example, also. So um, it, it's, yeah, re really good too, uh, to, I, I believe. 
Yeah, yeah it's so helpful. A lot of musicians use it as well. Yeah. Um, the world's changing now, and people understand yes. that if they've got if they've got a crowd, and they can connect with them, that they can release things independently, and that's really powerful. So yeah, I, it's it's interesting that you say because I I talk about on my channel I talk about vinyl records. I'm a vinyl record collector, so I. I shun away from uh, streaming and stuff like that. I'm obviously uh, in love with the uh, old format. The, what what does vinyl records mean to you guys? Do you have any sort of connection or, or um, <laughs> relationship with the, the format a vinyl record? Not really. <laughs> no, no, I didn't believe that uh, either. Few have of the artists that I've talked with. Yeah, I, I have a few, but I don't listen to any music. No, okay. So, yeah, it's 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 so balanced for me. It's always like this. So if I paint, I don't see any painters painting. If mm. I, in the case, if I make movies and I don't watch at the watch at the movies. So so if I I made a music, so I don't hear any music. Only only oh. classical music, but it's not the binals or. or all the type of CDs, you know. Yeah. So that's, we that's did talk thing. about it, Damo, though. We do we do love product, though. Like, you have some really beautiful product in your house from the Damo Suzuki Network. Like, um, it's lovely to have something to hold on to, to, to look at visually and look at yeah. images. And I, I love that. To have the ability to still do that's really important for me. I am aware that people generally just do everything on the internet now. But if I'm really a fan of something, then it's nice to support the artist. Um, yeah. And like with Damo, people love to buy his product because they were there in that moment at that venue in that year in that country. And that, that's even more special, I guess. Mm. Yeah. And it's haptic, you know, so I need always uh, something to have in my hands. And I think uh, computers always, you do everything with that, you know, mm -hmm. a CD uh, could mean uh, a film, could mean a mathematic program, it can mean uh, 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 business, uh, mm -hmm. and you do everything. And this is too much for me. I need books. Yeah. I don't have any uh, ebook reader. I don't like ebooks because I have it to have in my hand and I have to mark it and um, I have to know where it is mm -hmm. and uh, not looking in the computer where the book, you know, so this is yeah. nothing for me. And it's, um, it's, so, it's so dangerous for the common knowledge mm -hmm. because I can put it away and then it it's it's forever go has forever gone. Yeah. But if mm -hmm. I have it in my hand, I have a lot of uh, uh, books. They are not any longer available. You know. So yeah. and uh, yeah. so, um, I think vinyl and so this is you know in 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 your underconsciousness this is music. Yeah. yeah sure. And I have a vinyl. Yeah. You, you connect directly what kind of product and you are very clear with that. Yeah. If you have something in your computer, there's everything mixed uh, or um, the streaming and, 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 and uh, copy. Maybe um, you have some, uh, we, we love to hear someone who is uh, explaining things. And he is always saying, copy it give it to your friends and so yeah. this this is good yeah so yeah it's more of a human experience it's important to be able to literally have something and hold it in your hand or like in today's society everything's trying to make us not human anymore not going out for a walk seeing the sun and no. using yeah, everything, everything is in it's a so small important. box you know so <laughs> everything in a small box it's, it's so it's not my world so you know yeah, yeah. It's easy to connect with something if you can hold it um, yeah. and you've got it there in your home to see it and remember it. Whereas it's easy to forget something if it's something yeah. you've looked at on the Internet and especially with books as well. Um, you know, it becomes habitual if you can read that book and highlight pieces. I'm a bit naughty. I like to color things in just to yeah. remind myself. And you can't do that if it's not a physical. No. Yeah.
Yeah, I, 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 um, I also think that uh, streaming services, uh, especially, I don't know, music-wise, maybe a little bit, but especially in film, I feel that um, these big streaming services are stupefying sort of uh, uh, the the audience or or people because, like Netflix, they decide what we can see. Uh, yes. Of course, and yeah. and it's it's uh, often I guess based on their own productions and or the most grossing or highest grossing films. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, uh, it's just it, idiot stuff <laughs> on, on on the on the channel. Uh, so so you don't sort of educate people anymore. I, I don't know. The Swedish government. We have a, 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 a our TV has a sort of a, a purpose it sounds a little bit like um but but uh, yeah uh, yeah it's like what damo says it's very important what you choose to eat and drink and watch because like i do subscribe to netflix i don't want to say anything bad about netflix let's just no, say no, that, um you know it's really important to get an audience and for people to see things that are, that that are going to change their life and be inspirational but a lot of films are actually not inspirational and they're fear inducing and i think it's important to watch things that are inspirational and positive that that's just me it helps me flow through life better i'm less afraid if i watch more positive things and habitually think about wonderful things rather than habitually watch a series about something that's going to be like making me feel tense or something you know yeah but so, we are yeah, back... like you said like a lot of the genres that are available today i think a lot more thought should be put in that and even yeah. with daytime tv as well like but you know because there's so many filmmakers all over the world i guess it's great that we can independently upload things on places like vimeo and um yeah just uh be able to speak in our own voice and convey things that are going to be like positive for, for the viewer yeah. in my mind that that's something that I as my journey through life that's what I want to do you know create something that that is a gift to people that will make them maybe inspired in a positive mm -hmm. way uh, yeah what what's in store for the future for you guys i mean um, damo what's the next sort of do, do i dare ask what's the next next thing you are or do you don't maybe you don't have a plan for for it yeah i have a, i have kind of a plan so i'm getting hungry and i go to kitchen and cook, cook yeah. <laughs> okay uh, at first <laughs> This I make this, then I can give you answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so Michelle, what's what's uh, what's the next sort of step? Is it um, getting the movie out? Yeah, sure. So I'd like it to. A lot of people are communicating with me online now and really want to see the documentary. Um, so in the next few weeks, I'm going to try and have it exclusively on Vimeo for the United Kingdom and Europe. And then we're going to put on subtitles in Japanese so we can send it out to Japan. Yeah. Um, then we will be submitting to festivals in the US of A. So I can't release it exclusively online yet because I wouldn't be able to submit to festivals because there's all these rules. Yeah. Um, so uh, and then I'd like to plan a screening in Germany so that Damo and Elka can attend close to their home which would be really lovely and i can get to see them again in the real world rather than just on the internet yeah. um so that will be nice and then later on finally we will release a beautiful product with a with a booklet and photography and things um hopefully i can raise funds through the online streaming yeah. to be able to do that so yeah Oh, many plans. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the current plan. <laughs> the first thing. So tight schedule. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. well, it sounds like a fantastic sort of future uh, ahead. It would be awesome to. Uh, you, I have to check for the the date for a a, a screening screen screening in Germany. I mean, I can I can I can. Um, me and my wife could jump in the car and we'll we we would be in germany in germany like five hours drive or something like that so oh. uh, but i don't know cologne is that uh, far down in in uh, oh. germany 
Yeah, so anything like um, 500 kilometers from uh, Hamburg. Okay, okay. So it's like, uh, oh, okay, I'm going to Stockholm tomorrow. It's 500 kilo kilometers to, to Stockholm. So, um, yeah. Um, so it's like going to Stockholm a little bit yeah. further. Yeah, but it's not so cold. <laughs> no, but it's not so cold, no. And, not, and, and the street is much more huge. Yeah, here. yeah, than in Stockholm. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Old Town in, in Stockholm. Um, I'm doing a... Gamalastan. It's, it's a beautiful place. Uh, um, I know, Gamalastan. Looking forward to it. Um, would be so, good if so, yeah. you could make it, yeah, um, depending on the venue that that we we get um and cost etc it would be amazing to even have bands on as well and maybe yeah. even Dan might even do something um if not then maybe just like photography and a little exhibition of the network posters as well just something yeah. really fun and arty and just really full of beautiful energy that people will love to be yeah. part of very close to Dan and Elka so it's um easy for them to get to because they deserve like a, a proper screening near their home yeah sure yeah. That would be awesome. Have to let me know when it yes. happens. Yes, <laughs> I will do for sure. Uh, thank you so so much for uh, having this conversation with me. I'll end this now and and I'll just stop uh, the recording and uh, so yeah. So thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing if you haven't for more content like this and give it a thumbs up just to to show some appreciation. See you in my next video. Bye.